Hello my beautiful friends and welcome. I'm Inga, physiotherapist and in today's video we're looking at a muscle that's often overlooked when talking about lower back pain, the psoas muscle. We all sit too much and maybe when you get up from sitting you feel the urge to suddenly stretch out your back and actually stretch out the front of your body a little bit or you are also suffering from hip and groin pain. In this video, we'll firstly brush over the anatomy quickly so you understand the treatment a bit better. Then I show you a self-assessment test, followed by two stretches because often the psoas muscle is too short. And then very important, I show you two strengthening exercises because often we see a combination of a shortened muscle, which is also weak, which is a bit of a tricky combination. And lastly, I'll show you a strengthening exercise for the antagonist muscle that can actually make all the difference. So I encourage you to stick around for that as well. So our psoas muscle is located very deep in the body close to the spine. At its distal end, so at its lower end, it combines with the muscle that's called the iliacus muscle and together they form the iliopsoas muscle. So your psoas muscle actually originates on the T12, so your thoracic, the last thoracic vertebra and your lumbar vertebra, so your L1, L2, L3, L4 and very deep on the L5. It inserts on the lesser trochanter of your femur, which is your upper leg bone. The insertion and origin is very important to know since it tells us a lot about its function. So what are the functions? The fact that it runs very deep combined with the fact that it originates from your lumbar spine means that it plays an important role in your back health. Furthermore, the psoas is the strongest hip flexor of our body. It also helps to laterally bend our trunk and it helps to straighten our trunk when we come, for example, up from a sit-up. Other than that, it also helps us to stabilize our pelvis. What are the problems with the psoas? Well, the psoas is often shortened and weak. We all sit too much, which brings the psoas in a shortened position and this can lead to lower back pain. What sometimes happens as well is if one side is more tight than the other, your pelvis is getting pulled forward only on one side, bringing you into what we call an anterior pelvic tilt. This can also cause or be conceived as SI joint problems. So what can or what should we do? Well, the problem with the psoas is that it doesn't respond super well to stretching. We should still stretch though and open the front body. Again, if you remember, we sit too much so everything is shortened, so we need to bring it in the opposite direction. But then, very important, we need to strengthen it. And we also need to strengthen the antagonist. Our antagonist of the psoas muscle is the gluteus maximus, which is the large muscle in your buttocks. What this muscle does is exactly the opposite. It helps us to extend our hip, okay? If you are tight in your psoas, you most likely are weak in your gluteus max as well. Since the shortness of the psoas is pulling your body in a position where the glute max can't perform as it should. So we first need to stretch out the front, then strengthen the front, and as I said, strengthen also the back so everything works nice and smoothly together. But let's start with our self-test to help you identify if it's really your psoas muscle bothering you. So for the modified Thomas, please find yourself a spot on the floor or on your bed. If you lay on your back, you're going to extend both of your legs straight and then take one of your knees towards your chest. I'm going to demonstrate with my right knee first. So you bring your right knee towards your chest and you're actually testing the opposite side. So here we're testing the left psoas or the iliopsoas muscle. Since it's hard to isolately test the psoas, we're testing here the iliopsoas. The reason we're laying flatly on the floor and not letting the leg hang off a bench is to exclude the rectus femoris and get more the iliopsoas muscle to act, okay? So you're pulling this opposite knee towards your chest and what we're looking for, so a positive sign for the test, would be pain in the opposite groin, so if you're experiencing pain, and also if your leg, so the leg that's extended, is coming off from the floor, so coming up as such. And the third sign we're looking for is a lumbar lordosis. So you're looking for an arched back. If you have to arch your back, this is also a positive sign indicating shortness of the iliopsoas muscle. If your leg is abducting, so if it's moving that way, this is more a sign for a tight IT band, which is a whole different problem, okay? Which leads us to our stretches. So let me show you the two stretches I recommend. Our stretch number one is a kneeling lunge stretch. 
For that, come into a kneeling lunge position. So you are standing on your knees, the forward leg is coming into this position, and then you're leaning forward, and you should feel a stretch on, in this case, the left side. And pay attention that your lower back is not arched, the core is engaged, shoulders are back, gaze is forward. If you would like to take it to the next level, I recommend that you take your left heel, so the heel from the side that's back, and pull it towards your buttock. Also engage your gluteus maximus, so your butt muscle, and stay here and stretch for a moment. Very good. Also repeat this on the other side. I recommend to hold this stretch for 30-45 seconds, and you can also do it against the wall or against the couch. If this is still not challenging enough for you, you can also stay in this position and then bend towards one side. If you remember, the iliopsoas also laterally bends the trunk, so that way we can make sure to get it a little bit more. You can bend into both directions and see which side is serving you better and then repeat on the other side. Our second stretch is a cobra stretch or from the McKenzie technique, the cobra, okay? So please come onto your stomach, place your hands below your, your shoulders and from here push up and work yourself up and come back down and again push yourself up. Sometimes the stretch is felt even more intense if again you bring your heels towards your butt and work yourself up and down in this position, stretching the front of your body, okay? Again, some people like to do this against the wall, which would look like that. Now let me show you our first strengthening exercise. So come on your back and from here, you're going to elevate your legs into a 90 degree position. Please pay attention that your lower back is on the floor. Point your hands towards the ceiling and then we're going to work diagonally. So you're going to bring your left leg and your right arm down simultaneously. So like that. You engage your core, your lower back stays glued to the floor and then you change sides. Okay? and repeat this exercise for 10 to 15 repetitions. Try not to move the knee that's up too much towards your chest, but try to keep it in the position. I know it makes it harder. If it's too hard for you, work with your legs first, okay? And then make it harder by including your arms. Very good. For our second strengthening exercise, if you have hardwood floor, maybe grab yourself a sock. If you have carpet, maybe a paper plate will do. And put the sock onto one of your feet. If you have sliders, these also work, of course. So we're going to do a lunge, but you're going to bring the foot with the uh, sock backwards, okay? So you push it back and then you pull it back forward all the time pushing the side with the sock into the floor, okay? So you push it down, down, down and forward, okay? Repeat this exercise also for 15 times and I recommend three sets. So as promised with our last exercise, we're targeting our antagonists, our gluteus maximus. For that, we're going to do a simple glute bridge. So you come onto your back, heels are almost touching the hands, but not just. From here, you're going to bring up your buttock, contracting it all the time, really squeezing the butt. Hold it on top for a moment, slowly lower it down, but don't touch the floor and come back up all the time, squeezing, squeezing and working those glute muscles. Very good. If this is too easy and you want to take it further, you can extend one leg forward. This is also taking the iliopsoas in again. Then you can work from here on a one-legged glute bridge. Again, I recommend 15 repetitions for around three sets. So that's it. You made it until the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and we always love to hear from you down in the comments below. 
If the Thomas test was negative, you can also check out our video on SI joint pain and tests, which I will link up here. And then I hope you feel better soon and I hope to see you here again soon. Have a nice day.